the jailbird. The yard will be closed in 30 minutes, screamed one of the many loudspeakers hanging on the quarter-mile steel wall of the prison. My duties as x-ray technician of the prison hospital were completed for the day. I headed down the long steel corridor looking for my friend Wendell Leroy Archer. Leroy and I were from two different states. Even though I was a state prisoner from Alaska, both of us were incarcerated at the Lompoc Federal Penitentiary at Lompoc, California. Leroy for stealing a car and me for purchasing a six pack of beer at a party. A party where several underage teenagers were caught drinking alcohol. Kids that I didn't even know and had never met. I shouted as I saw Wendell coming out of the library. Let's hit the yard and get some fresh air for a while, I told him as he walked my way. We approached the two open steel doors, turned left, and walked out onto the yard. Off in the distance I could see the two 20-foot high chain-link fences with circular barbed wire that surrounded the entire large prison. Between the two fences the ground had been sprayed with a white powder substance. Anyone trying to escape who might make it across the first fence without being shot would leave a white trail of footprints. Several hundred yards to my right and to my left were two guard towers. Each stretched some 40 or 50 feet into the air. They were surrounded with a glass type house sitting on top of a massive concrete pillar. Guards set atop with automatic weapons in case of escape or some sort of a major disturbance out on the yard. The yard was filled with about 600 inmates, each divided into various sections. The whites in one section, the blacks in another section, and the Mexicans in their section. In addition to these groups, there were the gangs. Anyone moving about the yard would do so at a reasonable distance from the gangs. Even accidentally bumping into someone in the yard would be looked upon as an assault. Such an incident could get you beaten, stabbed, and possibly even killed. Carefully, Leroy and I walked out into an open area and sat down on the ground and we began to talk. As we talked, we watched the weightlifters in the weight area. Several groups of men were throwing a baseball back and forth. Several others were pitching a rubber ball against a cement wall as they were playing handball. Other prisoners were walking and running around the track just trying to stay into shape. When prisoners are on the yard, you always keep your eyes open and you stay alert at all times. You never allow anyone to walk up behind you. If someone were to walk up behind you, you immediately stand up and you face them down. Though there are hundreds of different conversations taking place, you are not allowed to eavesdrop. Even if you overhear the conversation, you had best not look or act as though you heard anything. Even looking in the direction of a conversation might start a serious and violent confrontation. As we talked, we noticed a large group of men gathering at the cement wall. Within a minute, almost everyone on the yard was walking in that direction. Wendell and I stood up and I noticed the guards on the towers walk out onto the cement ramp with a rifle in their hand. Within a minute or so, word had spread throughout the yard that a bird had flown into the cement wall and had injured itself. We slowly made our way over to the wall. Sure enough, there was a bird lying on the ground with an injured wing. One of the weightlifters reached down, picked up the bird, and began to stroke its head. The prisoners packed in tight to see what was happening. As I stood there, I looked back and forth at the faces of every prisoner. Something had changed, even if only for a moment. Not a one prisoner was on guard, and no one was worried about being hurt. All that seemed to matter was the injured bird. Dispense and return to your stations, sounded the loudspeaker. Slowly, the crowd began to move apart. I watched as the captain came walking across the yard, swinging a billy club in his hand. As he reached the wall, he pushed the club as hard as he could into the chest of the man and ordered the weightlifter to put the bird down on the ground. The large man carefully placed the bird on the ground, and then he stepped back and just stood there. The captain raised his glove above his head, and he struck the bird in the head as hard as he could. 
the bird fluttered its wings and flew around in a small circle for several seconds. Then it lay lifeless on the ground. In the stillness, its beak opened and closed several times, and then its head slowly lowered to the ground. I watched as tears slowly ran down the cheeks of the muscle-bound weightlifter. All at once there came a cry of protest from the entire crowd, a sound like I had never heard before. They were not sounds of madness, but cries of pain and sorrow. Again I watched the faces of these hardened men as they cried out in protest. I watched as several of them covered their faces and sat down on the ground. The guards in the towers loaded and raised their rifles. Gradually, the yard began to empty. That night was not like other nights in prison. There was no laughing or talking or crying between cells. All was silent and quiet. I lay to myself thinking about what I had seen that day. I wondered why such a thing would be so dramatic to these men. I wondered how many of these men had been struck, beaten, or knocked to the ground when they were helpless, defenseless little children. That seemed to be a very unusual thing to me when I was in prison. Almost any crime would be accepted or tolerated. Anything goes, except hurting a child or a defenseless little animal. I wonder what it was I saw in their faces that day. I wonder what it was that made these hardened men open up their hearts just for a moment. I never said anything to anyone about the bird. I don't think it was ever mentioned again. The next day all was back to normal. Everyone was once again on guard and watching their backs. However, I do know this. I learned a very good lesson that day. I saw no matter how hard and mean a man can be, there is something somewhere that can touch the inside of every man's heart.